Donald was a chieftain bold who dwelled at Dunless with his clan, sip from ships upon the ocean and from raiders on the land. There he ruled for many years, for else there was his way. The Irish Rovers have lived large, traveled far, topped the music charts, and inspired one of the world's best known party anthems. When Irish lads George Miller and Jimmy Ferguson first met each other in Toronto, they sang Until Dawn, which launched the Irish Rovers. It is my pleasure to welcome George Miller to Studio 4 to tell us more. How are you there? Hey, nice to see you. Nice to see you too. Um, so, yes. when you met that guy, uh -huh. that Jimmy Ferguson in the bar. He was a bad man, that one. I bet he was. Did you know each other in Ireland? No. Or this was a first time? Strictly in Toronto. I was still uh, finishing school, and he was working in where every Irishman in the world would go to in those days was Eaton's. Because Eaton's was owned by a man who was from our hometown, a Balamina, Timothy Eaton. That's where he was from. I didn't know that. Yes. So Jimmy I worked was at doing Eaton's that. Too. Oh, did you? Did you? Uh, no. 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 Okay. I was too young. <laughs> so, uh, so that we actually met in Toronto, and we started singing together at this. We were sort of at a, a charity show where there was Scotch people, and there was English and Welsh and Irish, and we were doing separate things. I was playing with my sister. I was playing guitar for her. Jimmy was doing. Um, do you remember Lonnie Donegan, the old skiffle? Of course. Well, he was doing that sort of material, mm -hmm. and we just did five minutes uh, to fill in. The only song we knew was the Irish Rover together, and that's how it started. And then it continued. It did indeed, and uh, it continues today. 45 years we've been doing it, and every year we say the same thing. Oh, we'll give it one more year and see what happens. And, uh, <laughs> you do say, though, that unlike the Rolling Stones, you don't have to wear spandex and elevator shoes. That's very important. In Celtic music, you, the hair can recede and the belly can come out mm -hmm. a wee bit, and it's almost, uh, it's almost required if you're a Celtic <laughs> musician. And um, for us to be weighing 95 pounds like Mick Jagger, we'd look horrible. We really would. Mm. We look bad enough as it is in the morning, but um, <laughs> to wear well, spandex and be about mm. 100 pounds, horrible, horrible and sight. And leap across the stage. Oh, for God's sake, and hard to get out of bed in the mornings at our age. I'm Never sure, mind leap I'm across sure. the stage. I'm sure, you're not that old. But touring um, is a young man's game, as you know. Oh, having absolutely. Having done so much of it. Well, especially nowadays, there's about nine of us traveling, and there's about 28 pieces of equipment. So just going for, let's say, if you have an 8 o'clock in the morning flight, we're there about four o'clock in the morning just to get onto that flight and get all the mm -hmm. equipment processed and put it through. And sure, well, you're um, lucky you have a flight and not a silver bus. This is true, too. We, we tried the bus once for about two days and it didn't work. There's some smokers and some non smokers, and somebody wanted the big bed at the back and nobody wanted the bunks. Mm -hmm. We now have vans. We just drive in three vans and that way we don't fight. <laughs> well, if you do, you'd never know on stage no. because you're so professional. Well, you know, I, I think you have to, in any business, it doesn't matter what you do, you have to enjoy what you're doing. And mm -hmm. we've been blessed with the idea that we can, we can do something we like to do and they actually pay us for it. And we've been doing it now for a lot of years and it's the fans. If they don't come out and see you, then you don't have anything. Can you imagine your life without music? No. In no, any way? No, there always would have been music. No matter what I would have done, I would have had to play music. It's just something that it relaxes me and I just like it. I like all sorts of music. So. Who taught you to play guitar? Uh, I taught myself at the age of about 14. I started playing guitar, and uh, it just sort of uh, developed from there. And uh, my father was a musician. He played uh, accordion, a little, little melodion. He would play that. Mm -hmm. and, and his two uh, brothers, my uncles, one of them was, uh, played the drums, and another one played another accordion. So there was always music rattling around our house. There was no television. There was no radio. So you'd make your own music. And as little kids, we would sit on the stairs listening to all the adults drinking their Guinness mm -hmm. and playing fiddles and banjos right. and accordions. So it was always there. It was destined to be from an early age in my case. Are all the Irish Rovers Irish, the current crop? We're all from the north of Ireland, except one fella is from the south of Ireland. We, we don't want to be prejudiced, so we have him. <laughs> He's from Cork, as far as you can go to the bottom, and right. we're up in the north. Mm -hmm. So um, we're all born in Ireland, and we're all now, most of us are Canadian citizens now. Sure because we live here and we like the country and you don't need a bulletproof vest when you're walking down the street. So it's true, but watch the tax department in the USA. Uh -huh. Hello. Oh, they'll get you. Somebody will mm -hmm. get you somewhere. Somebody will one ah, day. There's Unless no you rest. have that lucky unicorn around your neck. Yes, well, that little unicorn, we've been riding that for a few years now, and um, the unicorn really took us from, in, in our days, it was folk clubs. It wasn't the singing pubs right. of today. It was folk music, and people would sit on the floor, and there'd be funny smoke in the air. We didn't know what the heck it was at all, and there was no Still alcohol don't. in these places. And um, so the we, Depression we, Coffee House? Yes, Calgary. Calgary. 
And my God, it was depressing too, I'll tell you, now that I look back on it. Mm -hmm. But those were the days where you, you learned how to talk to an audience and maybe tell a wee gag and mm -hmm. y you learn all of the things that you need to learn about music. You can't come into this business and overnight you've, you're a success. It doesn't happen very often, if, if ever. There's a lot of work involved in it and you need these early years in the clubs and the pubs to learn how to control an audience and how to control yourself with them. It's and when you say important. how to control an audience, take me to the Purple Onion, San Francisco. Oh, all right. Long so, way from Ireland. Oh, it was uh, a few miles from Ireland. But what happened, what was so exciting about the Purple Onion for us is what it, it was control, it was not control, it was all bus tours from around America and Canada mm -hmm. that would stop at the Purple Onion. They'd get two drinks there. They'd go next door and see Carol Dota, who had breasts out the here somewhere. Right. She was a dancer. Yes. Lenny Bruce was at the next club. Mm -hmm. Across the street was the Smothers Brothers. So they did this, mm -hmm. these things, and they would have two drinks in each place. So I still have people today saying, we saw you in the Purple Onion. And I say, that was like 100 years ago. And yeah. say, yes, it was. But we were on a bus tour from Wyoming, and we saw mm -hmm. you there. So very I important see days. I you there. But I think I saw Peter, Paul, and Mary. Yes, they were at the Hungry Eye across the street. Hungry Eye. The Hungry That's Eye. That's right. And the Kingston Trio somewhere yes, in the vicinity. The Lime uh, Lighters were there. Lime Lighters. Well, all of those, all of those folk bands played these clubs, and that was, that was the early beginning. That's of right, Glenn Yarborough. That's right. And, right. and, and all of them, I remember, right. I grew up uh, with uh, a little bit with Judy Collins. She's a lovely singer. She's, She's still a doing lovely great. Singer. She's yes. coming here soon. Oh, is she? Yeah. Say hello. We've met her many times and would love to do some things with her. I will. But, uh, okay, I'll mention that. Tell her we do an album together. Or, okay. Oh, I said album. That's, there's no such word oh. anymore, is there? I think CD. you have to do a CD, but CD. you've done three television series, so you can call it an album. Okay. All right. Why not? Uh, people who write for you, uh, Randy Bachman. Mm-hmm wrote a song for the he Rovers, did, did indeed. he not? Yes, we did. A, he was actually on our TV, we did a TV special from the Unicorn. Do you remember the, the um, at the Expo? Sure do. Well, Who we doesn't? Did a, we Who did lived a, here then? Oh, that, those were fun, heady days. I loved those days. We actually, uh, getting off the subject, we, we uh, owned the place, so we were playing there for the first, uh, we were going to play for two months. You owned the Unicorn? We did. Good. So after Thank about you. a week, we fired ourselves because people were coming in at 8 o'clock in the morning and they were waiting for us for at 7 o'clock at night and they weren't buying anything. And we were saying, this isn't working. So we fired ourselves and took six months off. It was great. You fired yourselves from the From unicorn. playing in the unicorn. From playing just, in the unicorn. Right. Got you. We just sat and drank and ate. Why not? Yeah. And we drank a lot there too. Oh, good, good. And now we know all the words. Mm -hmm. uh, tumbling around in our heads and drunken yes. sailor too you said once maybe it wasn't you but one of the rovers said if the fans don't leave whistling to the drunken that sailor was, we haven't done our job that's right we've all basically said that the um, the thing about the irish rovers we're like we're not a political band we don't have any great message on stage other than life is short let's have a bit mm -hmm. of fun for two hours and that's that's all we do well and as you know so well that uh, it's impossible not to be happy when you're listening to the, it's just almost impossible, and you want to tap and move. Well, it is. I, I sort of liken it to like polka music. You might not like polka right. music, but if you're anywhere close to it, your little toe starts going. And I think Celtic music is like that. It's just a fun music. And we can be singing about Roddy McCorley, who was caught and hung by the English back in 1798. Mm -hmm. But it's such a happy tune. And, and sure. I'm looking at the people, and they're clapping, and they're... And I'm saying, they don't know a bloody word we're singing here. We're talking about some poor man who got <laughs> caught and hung, and yet it's such a happy exactly. sounding song that you're going, ooh. Which well, is like okay. drunken sailor, shave his belly with a rusty razor. And that's Ow. not an easy thing to do. We've tried that, and it's, it hurts. It, it really, really does. does. Yes, it does. Uh, uh, put him in a long boat till he's sober. That's right. Put him in the bed with the captain's daughter. And now the that's next a verse, happier thought. Well, the next verse is, have you seen the captain's daughter? See, that that's, too. That's the secret and to the song. And if the captain catches you in bed with the Absolutely. daughter. Absolutely. You'd walk a short plank real uh -huh. quick. So uh, stick him in a barrel with a, what was there, a hose pipe in him? On him. On him. Hose Somewhere. pipe. What's a hose pipe? I'm not sure, but it doesn't sound oh. good. No, it doesn't. <laughs> no, it doesn't. We'll have to look that up. Yes. Maybe. You'll have to Google that. Yes, okay. Okay. Hose pipe. So uh, performing here, the Art Center and Theater, Maple Ridge, we Tuesday, are. October 4th. And who's, who's part of the gang now? I know the dear well, Jimmy. Yes, Jimmy has departed us. My brother Will retired 17 years ago. He's living in Duncan somewhere, and he's a, an artist, which is very good. Mm -hmm. And we have Wilson McDowell, the original. He mm -hmm. plays the accordion. 
and John Reynolds has been with us now since Expo days for about 25, right. it's almost 25 this years is John since Reynolds, Expo. This John Reynolds, not the John Reynolds who's the conservative. No, not him. No. no. But so we have John Reynolds, we have a fella called Sean O'Driscoll from, he plays mandolin, banjo. We have a little, uh, not little, he's uh, our uh, drummer and baron player. For, he lives in Montreal, but he's from Belfast. And my cousin Ian Miller, He's in the band and he lives in Fort Lauderdale. So we live all over the world and that, right. this is a good thing. We don't fight when we're, you know, we're not But together. you're living in the Nanus Bay, I live right? in Nanus Bay and John Reynolds lives up in Campbell River. How great, and you're recording on the on the We All coast? of our recording starts in Nanaimo. There's it a, does, a, eh? this, uh, Rick Salt has a studio there. We start everything there, then I take it back to Ireland. I get Wilson and Sean and, mm -hmm. um, but nowadays, because of the new tech, uh, technology, you can actually start it here and send it as an email. He can put on his accordion and send it back to me in 15 minutes and his part is done. Now we don't normally do that because it doesn't, you, right. you sort of miss the togetherness, but it think. can be done. If, yeah, if you'd you miss the it. energy of it all, well, you wouldn't would. you? Uh, you would, mm -hmm. right. A little bit. So yes. is this the, the latest CD? This uh, is the latest CD. CD. Yes, yes, CD. Uh, album Fair. nowadays is for photographs, I suppose. Mm. Yes, this is the latest CD, and it's, uh, we usually do about one a year, and somebody says, how many do you have out after all these years? And I said, I think there's probably over about 31 or 32, and then there's best of and right. son of and daughter of and everything yeah, else. Yeah, that's why you're such a wealthy rover. Oh, it's just, just rolling. In. <laughs> no, well, well, not every <laughs> musician is. I'm dressed. There's just jeans and a in shirt. It. Yeah, that Armani sweater <laughs> you're wearing. My golly. No. My golly. How nice to see you. Thank you for having me. Uh, hope nice to get to, to see to you. To you. And of course this, and are you doing DVDs too? We just put All one out uh, called Home in Ireland. We just did it last September and we're starting a new one in Banff. It's gonna be a Christmas uh, DVD. Do it in Banff and Toronto and it'll be out not this Christmas, but the following Christmas. Oh great, so you get yes. to swan around Banff, ski a little Absolute. at sunshine? Ski? No, no. No, no, oh yeah, that. Yes. Yeah. I know how to do that too. <laughs> Apre ski. Apre ski, yes. thank you. Thank you. Uh, George Miller, the Irish Rovers, the Art Center and Theater in Maple Ridge, Tuesday, October 4th. You can catch all of our conversations on YouTube or follow us on Twitter at Fanny Studio 4. Tomorrow, the magical life of the forest and its people. Charlotte Gill, a former tree planter, dishes the dirt about tree planters and their adventures in her new book, Eating Dirt. And leadership and workplace trends consultant Cheryl Cran takes us on a mastermind retreat. Talk about burned out entrepreneurs who have lots of money stress. And Bob's and Lolo, two fun and fascinating children's entertainers, sing for us and their much younger fans. Thanks for watching Studio 4. Lots more on Shaw TV, only on Shaw TV.